smooth sack summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas. If you haven't been scaping for the summer sun, it's not too late to sweep your sack of those pesky pubes. As summer comes to an end and we enter fall, keep your boys clean and fresh just in time for fresh ball fall. The leader in below the belt grooming is here to make sure your pubes feel smoother than a beach ball and smell fresher than your girl's pumpkin spice. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to keep your sweet, sweet sack in check. Inside the package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ears, Nose, and Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmers feature a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 also has a 700 RPM motor a new multi-function on and off switch that can be engaged in travel lock. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock and gives you the ability to turn on the LED spotlight when needed for more precise shave. Did I mention the trimmer is waterproof too? Whether you're hopping in the shower or hitting up the lake, this razor will devour even the strongest pubes. Now that your sack is smooth, lather up with the Manscaped liquid formulation to get that fresh ball fall freshness the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant to stay cool in the heat, their soothing aloe vera formula with the best in the business for the below the waist freshness, and the clear drying formula to keep your sack looking and smelling good. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag that'll bring your comfort to another level at home or on the go. Keep yourself groomed from head to toe with their Sheer 2.0 a luxury nail grooming kit. This kit includes a stainless steel nail cutter, tweezer, and a groom scissor. With the Performance Package 4.0, your balls will be ready to impress. But make sure you cover the rest with the Shears 2.0. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off plus free shipping with code SMOKE at manscaped.com. Keep things smooth and fresh as we say sayonara to smooth ball summer and enter a fresh ball fall. Are you looking to add a little bit more thrill into the college football season? Look no further than DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook app. They are dishing out can't miss deals for all new customers all season long. Bet $5 on any college football wager and instantly receive $200 in free bets. You heard it right, new customers could throw down just $5 and receive $200 in free bets. Plus with the same game parlays, you can win even more. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a shot at even a bigger payout. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE and receive $200 in free bets instantly when placing just a $5 wager. That's promo code SMOKE only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Welcome back to All The Smoke. We in New York. And wow. Okay. It's been a minute. We haven't been in a minute. Ooh, it's your turn. You got the sweaty palms this time. No, that was you. I was just going to say you. That was definitely you. That Mike, was def shake his hand and that, tell him what you think real quick. You. Shake Mike's hand. Them are moist, right? <laughs> <laughs> shake, you shake, you shake his too. Mine was, was regular, right? I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> if if I needed to seal an envelope for both of y'all, just shake y'all hand and do like that, and I seal the envelope. Both of y'all a little moist, man. If New York got y'all, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't moist, though. Like, he normally kill me. You know, he normally kill me with my hands sweaty. He's talking about I'll be nervous when we have guests. So he's Girl, like, you blame that shit on me. You made my hands wet to shake his motherfucking hand. Anyway, man, today we like to welcome to the show Super Bowl champ, co-host of Good Morning America, and a Fox Sports analyst, the one and only. Man, Michael Strahan, thank you for being here. I appreciate it, man. Um, man we really, I, I just want to, before we get going, man, I just want to commend you. I think you've really been an inspiration for a lot of us, the way you've been able to have a successful career, but then switch into the media space and be very successful in sports, but then cross over in mainstream media. And that's very hard to do. And you've done that very gracefully. And, uh, you know, when people ask, like, oh, who do you look up to in this space, man? You're the one I say, so. Well, that kind of freaks really me out, though. I ain't going to lie to you. Because I, I've, I've talked to you before about this. And, Jack, I saw you at the boxing mm -hmm. match like a week or so ago. And 
you know, you kind of just start doing your thing. You don't even think about who's watching or whatever. And especially when you're a football player, then you guys are playing basketball. And I'll watch you guys, both of you 14 years in mm-hmm. the NBA, both mm-hmm. won championships, and I'm watching that. So to have you two say that to me kind of makes me feel like, <laughs> like what the hell is going on? Like, this, nah. don't, this don't seem right, but I appreciate it, man. Yeah. And what you guys are doing. I mean, the transition that you've made. Mm-hmm. And you know it's not easy. It mm-hmm. takes a lot of hard work, and y'all are putting in the work, and now you got this show amongst other things that you're doing, and it's a testament to just your, the way you're willing to work and your personality and the right. fact that people want to listen to you because mm-hmm. you got something to say. First and mm-hmm. foremost, absolutely. So, uh, Appreciate it. how's your day? It's the off-season right now. Um, what are your day? Oh, What's I, an yeah, off-season? Right, right. <laughs> what, what are your days like these days? Uh, you know, hey, well, a GMA every morning. I, I'm what time? up at five. Oof. Five. Listen to Bill Withers. Listen to Bill Withers. <laughs> lovely day. You got to convince yourself when it ain't a lovely day sometimes to get up. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm up at five every day. I got to read my notes, take a shower, get in the car, and get to the studio. And I, once I get in the studio, I'm running. So it's not like I get there and it's, give me a cup of coffee, close the door, let me get my, my thoughts together. So, it's literally, you hit the door. I hit the door, like hair, makeup, change, change my outfit. And by 641, I'm sitting in front of a chair telling Chicago what's coming up. Mm. And then I go downstairs. And, and right when I walk in the door, though, I have to do like coming up on GMA today. We got blah, 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 blah. We have to do all those voiceovers. Mm-hmm. And then seven to nine, it's just nonstop, man, constantly changing. It's so different from sports. Right. It's so different from doing entertainment. When I did that, when I filled, when I took over for Regis and did the show with Kelly, mm-hmm. the most difficult thing I've ever done, but also at the same time, it's fulfilling. Because I'm learning stuff every day. Mm-hmm. I'm more attached to what's going on in the world. Right. And it's not just like one lane of, of doing one thing. Mm-hmm. And it's a challenge. And I like doing it because people don't think you can do it. Right. We're not I supposed too. to be no, able to do not. That's it certain things. So for me, what motivates me is to be able to do things that kind of um, show people that as an athlete, as a black man, as a young black man, as a fight, like I can do other things right. outside of hit somebody who's carrying a football. Mm-hmm. Right. And y'all can do more than just mm-hmm. dribble, you know, right. and shoot and dunk. Mm-hmm. Right. We're bigger than that. We're more than that. How do you keep the balance? Because like you said, there is no really all season. So sometimes you have GMA, then you got the NFL, you got yeah. a family, you got this, you got that. How do you find that balance? Right. How do you find <laughs> that balance? <laughs> Compartmentalize, man. It, it, it goes to me. Everything backs up to sports. When I go to practice and I knew, and we go to the sideline and I don't have to be in the game, I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. We can have a conversation. Then they go defense. I say, hold on, hold on. Two. I go grab my helmet. I run out there. Lock in, do my thing, come back, put the helmet down, and pick up the conversation. So that's pretty much what I do now. It's like I think about one thing, and when I'm there, I'm present. Oh, man. And I do it. Because I don't, I, I, you never know who's watching, who's listening. You never, that commitment for you, it may be one of the many things that I do, but maybe it's one of only one thing right. that somebody else does that right. they need me there for. Mm-hmm. So I want to give them everything I got. And so the second I leave that, though, Half the time, if you ask me what happened on GMA, who did you talk to today, I'd be like, man, that's a good question. Right. Let me <laughs> really know. Right. right. Uh, December 11, 2021, you became the tallest man to go to space. <laughs> Blue Origin uh, with Jeff Bay on, on Jeff Bezos' experiment. What was that like? Yeah, waiting on him. Well, waiting to hear this. All, the tallest man to go to space. That ain't hard. Right. Because the little ass astronauts yeah. couldn't fit in anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now yeah. now they make it where we could fit. Right. But before you couldn't fit anyway. It was it was the most amazing thing I've ever done. Mm. Because there were reasons for like just not even the trip itself. Things that happened before I went made it incredible because it makes you evaluate yourself, your life, your family, your friends, where you stand in the lives of people, where what they mean to you, where they stand in your life, what's important, because you're almost getting your eulogy before you mm, even right. do it. Because people, your boys are like, yo, man, your boys, you always, you know, y'all, y'all are always up, you're busting each other, you know, balls, for lack of mm-hmm. a better word. Then your boys are like, um, yo, man, I'm a, hey, man, hopefully everything right. good, dog, I love you, man. And you're just like, well, damn, Shit. where'd that come from? Then you realize the severity of it. Mm-hmm. And... You have your will, but then when you got to redo it and make sure everything is tight, not because you're thinking in 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, no, because you're thinking in three, four, five, six, seven days, mm-hmm. it might kick in. 
and you're looking at your kids, and you're like, I ain't mm-hmm. ready to leave my kids. Mm-hmm. Right. Got, you know, I had my mom still living, my brothers and sisters. And I'm like, I'm not ready to go, like, to, to leave this planet. And they're not ready for you. And you realize that the ecosystem that you have around you, the people that love about you, care. But then when you go up and you're looking back at the planet, damn, that's crazy to say. Yeah, you like the, 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 back at the, arc, planet. the arc of the, the planet, the different layers of atmosphere you start out. Like down here, it's light. I mean, you're chilling, you're looking up, and it's getting darker as you're going. And next thing you know, I'm up in darkness, and I'm looking down at the light instead of the light looking up at darkness. Mm-hmm. And you're floating. You're weightless. You push yourself around with two fingers. And you're just moving effortlessly throughout this cat. It, w- it was the most amazing thing I've, I've ever done, man. And I'm not a space. Right. Like, I'm not, I'm not a risk person. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to live. Right. Like, I, breathing. I, no, no, you can breathe. You don't need nothing. This is an air, it's like a um, sealed chamber. The only thing I was like, okay, if we get up there, what if that thing just starts floating off and we ain't coming back? Ain't catch like, us. And then you just got to sit up there until you starve to death or whatever mm, it may be. Mm. But it was, it was, it made me the happiest I've, I've been, man, because it really, you land and just smile on your face. You can't wipe it off. Man, you know, no, every, not, not some people can say that. Right. Very few people can yeah, say man, that. You're going up and there's like 3G, where you're sitting on that capsule, and you can get off up until two and a half minutes before, you know, takeoff. You can uh, say okay. time out, or you can go, I don't want to fly. Time out, they'll come on and try to say, yo, yo, Matt, you sure you don't want to do this? They try to talk you into right. it. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you go, I, I don't want to fly today, they're just going to come yank you off. And I was waiting for somebody to possibly save us all. Were you going to join? Uh, were you going to join up? He was going to join like, in? Hey, somebody does it. Oh, man. So how long does it take to get up? The whole thing is less than 12 minutes. Up and down. Really? Yeah. But you think about it, it That's feels bad, like, bro. I didn't know that. No, no, it's fast. I thought it was like a day. Now. In, in our time of 12 minutes, but you're so in tune. Like, you're, every sense you have is on alert. Yeah. Every creak and every movement, you just, you're just so intense, it seems like hours. Really? And then when you're sitting there and you're watching that clock and you know at 2.30 before countdown, I can get off. But once it's 2.29, you're, in. you're like, oh, the computer kicked in now. I can't stop. Then you just have to convince yourself, like, yo, this is like a Disneyland ride, Disney World, just going to go with it. And hope for the best. Twelve minute running clock, like a quarter. They got it worked out, man. Shit, that's crazy. But then when you hear like ten, nine, it's like you're in a movie. Yeah. And then when it lifts off and the thing is rumbling, you see the smoke and the inside that capsule turns red from the fire and the flames from the engine, and that thing just starts shaking and takes off. And then they're like, um, you know, Blue Origin, you know, New Shepard, you cleared the tower. And you just, everybody on the, literally everybody with being unprompted just screaming, like, yeah. How many just, other people were in there with you? Five other people, man. And then once you're going up, they designed the ship that it starts to, like, a slow spiral. That way, I don't have to look out the window over there to see what's going on. You just look out your window and you see the whole see everything. world. 40,000 feet up, 100,000 feet up, 200,000 feet That's up, 300,000 feet up, man. face getting pushed back. It, it, it was sick. I don't sick, know if I got it sick. in me, Jack. Y'all got to do it. You be the, yeah. Y'all can be the tallest because I'm short in this room. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be some crazy yeah. 12 minutes for me. I might pass <laughs> out. I know, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Would, would you do it? Oh, man. It feels free, probably. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't going to lie. So it, it free is a good point. Right. I know it was expensive. The second we landed... I see Bezos, Jeff, and I'm like, yo, I want to do it again. He goes, next time you got to pay. I said, I ain't doing it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Word, right. Word. right. College football is filled with rivalries, but if there's one thing everyone can get behind, it's making money. The place to win big is DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. In honor of college football season kicking off, they're dishing out killer deals to all new customers. New customers can bet just $5 and win $200 in free bets. That's right, just 5 bucks for $200 in free bets. Combine multiple bets in the same game for a chance to cash out. That's more legs you add, the more money you can win. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE and receive $200 in free bets instantly when pressing just a $5 wager. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Matt. 
Texas boy. Talk about yeah, your man. upbringing uh, in Houston. Um, your dad was an Army vet and a boxer, Army major and a boxer. How was it growing up in Texas? It was great. I, I mean, you know, you, you know Texas. Texas is Texas. Hot. And, and hot. And so um, hot, humid, went to Texas Southern, so yeah, HBC right there in the middle of Houston, which I think a lot of people don't realize. They think I went to some big program. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I went to the place that fit me the best. Right in the heart of Third Ward. Right in the heart of Third Ward, man. And um, But it was, it was great because had I gone to a bigger school because I came back from Germany because my dad was in the military, mm -hmm. I think I would have been swallowed up by just everything. I got the magnitude of everything, but TSU was perfect. And it was great being in Texas. It taught me so much that helped me when I came here to play. Like, like I came to New York, and I was a little green around the edges on a lot of things. But one thing, you, I was never going to get tired because my ass was used to running in that Texas heat. Mm -hmm. You weren't going to outwork me. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and it was just I came here with an attitude that I had no choice. Like I had no, I, I had to win here. All or nothing. I had, yeah, it was all or nothing for me. I didn't have a, a backup plan. I didn't have a, a thing where I can go home and do this and do that. Nah, 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 I ain't going back home. Mm -hmm. My whole goal in life has always been I'll move back in with my parents. Mm. That's it. Yeah. If something that simple makes me go out and right. hustle. It's mm -hmm. real. Yeah, I'm yeah. a grown man living with my parents. Not like, at all. I don't want to ask permission. I'm 40 years old to do something. <laughs> you know, 50 years old. Right. Mama, um, you know, I'll yeah. be in late. Can don't I? wait up. What? Right. Yeah. Leave the chain off the door. Yeah, leave the chain off the door. <laughs> <laughs> leave the chain don't, off the don't door. Don't turn the, I'll turn the alarm on when I get yeah, home. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I ain't doing that, man. When did football kick in? You didn't start playing until you late your senior year. Senior year. How did, and, and ended up being one of the I best was, uh, Man, my senior year of high school, my dad was like, yeah, I'm going to send you to Houston. You're going to stay with your uncle. You're going to play football. You're going to get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Plain okay. and simple. Okay. Everybody made it sound simple. Mm-hmm. He made it sound like it was supposed to happen. So when I came back, okay, that's my mission. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I did it well enough to get one scholarship. And, and that was the mission. Mr. Was a con He's like, school's free, and that's where you're going. So that was the first time you put on pads, everything? You I was you? seven and eight years old. Oh, and then, then after that, I right. didn't do anything. I, I was just growing up. Mm -hmm. And so for <laughs> me, it was, you know, learning how to put the pads on again, buckle mm -hmm. up the helmet, put the pants, the pants in my pants and all that stuff. And I just figured it out. I watched a lot of TV. I just watched football on TV. Mm -hmm. I watched the pros on TV. I saw all the big college players where everybody was talking about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know a quarterback sack was important when I was in high school. I played defensive end. I didn't know. I was just like, okay, whoever got the ball, that's a guy tackle. That's the name of the game. Out. Yeah, it's just, that's it. And... Yeah, so football, for me, I didn't grow up playing football. I grew up watching football. And I think the simplicity of which my dad said it, like, oh, you're going to do this. I was like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Did it. That's simple. You followed in your uncle's footsteps. Uh, you briefly touched on that you went to an HBCU, but can you elaborate on what that experience was like? Uncle Art. Uncle Art. Uncle Ray. Uncle Ray. Shout out to my Uncle Ray. Um, down there in Houston. It was HBCU. It's unique. It's special, man. And, and I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. They were like, yeah, I went to, to Howard or something. I said, yeah, but even at TSU, all the guys from the University of Houston we try to come over and hang out on our yard. Yep. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It don't work that way. Y'all they wanted go. Frenchies. Yeah, y'all got to go back. Y'all got to stay away from Frenchies. Right? <laughs> y'all got to go back over there. Because <laughs> people don't realize it was TSU, Yates High School, Frenchies, yep. and then the University of Houston. We were, you could throw a rock. Right, oh, there you yeah. but it, All right there. All right there, all, all like on top of each other, but the HBCU experience was, was, was different and special because I felt like it was intimate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we all in there together. We all looking alike, basically. We all sound alike. We all are here just trying to hustle and do what we got to do. And I'm still great friends with Corey Johnson, Chris Daggs, all my guys from back then in, in college. And we've all gone on and done our different things in life. But, yeah, man, the HBCU experience to, you know, from the classes to being on the yard to being on the football team to, you know, the parties to the dorms, like mm -hmm. all those things 
were were you know I it looked like you got your mind. Yeah, trouble, I was about to say you got your good. mind. You over here smiling. You didn't even know. Got his mind right. It's like damn, it was a good old good man. All that and. The projects George Floyd was from is two blocks away from everything he's talking about. All I which remember is, is, which is yeah, was crazy. It's two crazy. blocks away. I remember from all those schools. I remember Devin the Dude rapping about all the schools y'all was just mentioning right there. I was I used to listen to Devin the Dude. He was talking about all them schools right there. Explain the straight hand rule. I mean, you were often double teamed. Oh man, that was <laughs> um, yeah, in the game, man, just getting beat up. It's funny, you go out there in the game, and people don't realize how intricate. It's like basketball, people watching, oh, I can do that. They're just throwing the ball around, the guy just mm. gets open. Mm. It's plays, you running, you moving, it's technique, it's mm -hmm. all these different things, especially if you want to last, if you want to be great at it. So for me, that three-hand rule is like the being double teamed, man. Like, they used to just beat the hell out of me. <laughs> at least they used to try to beat the hell out of That's me. That's a compliment, though. Yeah, but I, you know what, at first, though, Jack, it was hard because... When you're getting double teamed, it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. I would rather just, you know, pause, by the way. Mm -hmm. look at me like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> he caught that one. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Got to be careful when, these when, days. when you're just trying to maneuver, it's hard enough to beat one, one blocker. Right. Yeah. But then when you're beating that guy, another guy is, 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 is one's hitting you down low, one's taking you, you know, hitting you up high, and it's like, you, you, and they big. It's frustrating. And they're big. Is big. I as mean, fuck. you got two guys, three hundred something pounds. Yeah, yeah. O line is big as fuck. And they're trying to take you out. And so, it, it, it first, it's, it pisses you off. But then you have to look at it as a compliment and go, "It means I'm good." You know what I'm saying? And then you try to, you find a way around it. So whenever you're able to beat two guys that make a play, it's even right. more satisfying more to just beat one. Yeah. And once you get used to it, it is, um, it's actually kind of fun, man. It's kind of like a science project and figuring out, or a math project and how to figure out the solution. And I'll never forget Justin Tuck, my teammate here in New York. Um, and they called me old man. End of my career, old man. I'm gonna kick your old ass out the league. That's what Tuck, he go like, kick your old ass out all the time, kick you out the league. I said, let me tell you, man. Mm -hmm. You'll be my backup as long as I continue to play. <laughs> as long as I decide to play, you'll be my backup. Right, right. And um, then I said, heavy is the crown. You don't realize how tough it is because you can be one of the 11. I could have been a starter for a few more years if I wanted, but to be the one of the 11, the one that every week you got to show up. Right. I can't have an off game. I can't have an off practice. I can't have nothing. Everybody's looking at me for leadership and guidance and then in the game for consistency. Right. So... I retired, and he calls me three weeks into the season. Man, it's tough. Man, how the hell one. did you do this? Because mm. he started getting those double teams. Mm -hmm. And I even saw Aaron, Aaron Donald, probably the greatest defensive lineman in the history of the NFL. I saw last year he was even talking about damn double team, getting frustrated by mm -hmm. it. But it's a compliment. Right. To how great you are. Mm -hmm. And you got to take it that way. So, like, straight hand rules, hey. I was happy. I'll take it. That's tough. Yeah, beat. Try to try to try to try to beat it out of me. I ain't gonna be. Yeah. I ain't gonna quit. Right. How much? How, what was? What was? How much did you weigh? Or what was your heaviest when you played? My you, heaviest. You said you was going against three hundred pound guys. Yeah. But when I first got in the league, I came in at two fifty something. But then they did. They like they told me gain weight. But back then. They don't tell you like the proper way. Right. So I was I was just fast food, pizza. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like 280. Ooh. I mm -hmm. felt like an engorged tick. I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was heavier. Yeah. I couldn't move, couldn't, couldn't right. perform. So then I started losing weight. So I got into like 272, which for years I was in the 270s. Then I went down to the 260s. As mm -hmm. you got older. Yeah, as I got older, mm -hmm. I started gradually losing weight. And then uh, my last three years in the league, I was every Friday we weigh in, and every pound you're over is like three hundred bucks. Mm. So my last three years, I got down like two forty seven to two fifty two really? every Friday. Yeah. Well, part of it, everybody's like, "Oh, you lost weight, you want to play?" I'm like, "No, I got divorced." Mm -hmm. That stress. <laughs> yeah. That stress. That's, oh yeah. Yeah, man. That, that, that stress cost Ooh. me some weight. But and I was, hair. But it, yeah, was hair too. And hair. And grays, but it ended up being good because I need to lose weight. It, it prolonged my career. Yeah. I feel like a totally different player the last three years of my yeah. career than I did the first 12. Because mm -hmm. I could run all day. My knees didn't hurt. My yeah. back stopped hurting. Yeah. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I did the South. Out of shape. I made me 235 when I came in the league and finished at like 210. Really? Yeah. 
got that. It's like you said, it just the older you get, I feel like the lighter I had to be. I was still as strong. It was just had to be lighter. And that was the thing. I was still as strong. And, and but I but it, it actually made the game easier because now I knew if I needed to get over there, I could make it because I'm lighter, I'm quicker, yeah. I'm faster, and I know I need to get there quicker than I ever knew 10, 10 years ago because right. I didn't know how, what I was looking for right. to determine where I need to be. So I was always a step ahead, and that that helped, man. And then when you're playing with OC, you and your, you're playing with Justin Tuck, mm -hmm. Fred Robbins, all these young cats. And they're out there calling you old man. It's like, oh, no, nah, y'all ain't going to run me up out of here. <laughs> yeah. I got to show y'all how it's done. So. Kept you on your toes. Thoughts on, uh, obviously, it's, it's you went to HBCU when it wasn't really talked about. It was, it was your option. Uh, but now what, what Dion is kind of doing yeah. and, and the attention that Dion is bringing to the HBCU landscape. I love what Dion doing. You know, and Dion, you have a, I have a company called Smack, my, my partner, Constance, and we rep Dion. Yeah, and Prime is my guy, and what he's doing is changing the landscape of HBCUs. But what I love about what he's doing is not just saying, "Come here, be a great football player." No, no, no. Come here and become be a, a great man. Man mm -hmm. first, like man first, football mm -hmm. second, mm -hmm. and then if football works out for you, I'm gonna tell you and show you how to be able to handle all that's gonna come your way because nothing came bigger to anybody than it did to Prime. Right. He's seen it all. He was ahead of his time. Can you imagine him in the social media era? What? <laughs> I mean, he's killing it now, social right, media right, era. It is like right, he's well past his playing right, days. Right. You know, so so I, I love what he's doing. I think he's making, bringing so much attention. I'm watching HBCU football games on ESPN and not on, you know, some channel that you'll never find or streaming. It's sport. like on yeah, the networks. So <laughs> so you said, Fox, so you <laughs> Hey, I ain't want to say that, but you're right. But I always mess with, hey, man, I remember we played Jackson State one year, my senior year for their homecoming, and we were on BT. That was lit. You would have sworn John John Madden was calling was the game. Lit, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, this is this is like Monday Night Football. Yeah, we were suited and booted, spraying our spats, spats. on our yeah, spraying the yeah, spats yeah. black, trying to get look right. But what Dion's doing is really something, and I love the fact that he's stressing education as much as he's stressing what these guys do on the field. And he's just bringing so much attention and money. Right. I mean, the millions of dollars he generated just for the city of Jackson, mm -hmm. Mississippi, and also the millions of dollars he generated for their program, for the school. Right. I hope, I know Eddie George is doing it too mm -hmm. at Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. I just hope we see more guys who've had great careers in the NFL who want to be coaches get yeah. the opportunity and actually invest in, in these kids who deserve it and can attract some of these kids away from, you know, not saying necessarily away from these large colleges, but let these kids know they have another option. Mm -hmm. Right. Isn't Mo Williams over there now too? Mo Williams, yeah. So yeah. he's at the coaching he's the basketball, basketball, men's coach, basketball. Now. Yeah, shout out Mo, yeah. Yep. Drafted 40th overall, 1993. What do you remember most about, you, about the draft? Any weird question they asked you during the process? Man. They ask you, some of this stuff, you had to take the Giants, had this like 150 question survey. Just, Just to get drafted? God. In a training camp, yeah. I think what they wanted to do, it was, in, uh, it was at the combine. I think they wanted to test you to see, because question 95 is just like question three. I guess they wanted to see if they're going to wear you out, how long your attention span could be. Mm -hmm. And it would be stuff like if you were in traffic, and there was a line with six cars and a line with no cars. Would you want to be car number seven, or would you be the first and want to be first in line? And I'm like, that's stupid. I want to be first in line. Mm -hmm. That shows leadership. Like I'm, I'm like, this, what the hell are doing 150 mm -hmm. of these? I'm not a follower. But if you didn't do it, then. Speaking of prime, I think they asked Dion to do it. Dion said, "What pick are y'all?" They go I five. They go, "I ain't gonna be right anyway." <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, I think he told us that. He told us that. I ain't gonna be right anyway. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, funny. but that had to do all that stuff. But you know, coming from TSU at that time, I had to do whatever I had. Mm -hmm. I had to do. I had to right. do everything. Right. And I'll never forget filling out stuff like that. You have you. They come to campus. They run you through all these drills more so than they probably did with anybody else. And then it always, I'll never forget, I'm sitting uh, with this scout, Tommy Hart. He was a scout for the 49ers. And there's another guy, oh, my boy. You um, had a chance to get you? Yeah, Todd Kelly. Fuck. Todd Kelly, University of Tennessee, my guy. We could come out same year. We working out together. We had senior bowl together, all these things. We're sitting there with this scout, Tommy Hart from the, 40, Tommy Hart from the 49ers. He looks at us. He's sitting there and goes, Michael, 
You know, I don't. You'll never. I don't think you'll ever be able to be like Todd. I don't think you'll ever be able to close a quarterback and get, get sacks in the NFL like like Todd would. I'm sitting right next to my boy Todd. Like, well, damn. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, just shit in my bucket. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and to this day, I have not forgotten right. that comment. Right. I have not forgotten the list of defensive linemen who were drafted in front of me or even considered to be in that same group as, mm. you know, like I, I can tell you, man, from, from Carl Simpson to Coleman Rudolph to Eric Curry, John Copeland, Dan Williams, um, um, Dan Footman, um, who else who? is there? Who? Well, none, none of these people. <laughs> but their thing was he's from a, he's from TSU. Yeah. Yeah. Competition. Right. Mm -hmm. He can't keep I don't we don't think he can keep up. He ain't this, he ain't that. But one thing I found, you can't teach. You can't teach heart. Hearts. You can't, can't teach, teach that. desire. Amen. Right. Those are things that um uh, maybe you gotta trust your gut to figure out if somebody's a fit, but I was second round, 40th pick overall. Mm -hmm. Thank God for um the Giants, even though Jimmy Johnson told me he's gonna pick me for the Cowboys. That would have been dope. Yeah, well, I, you know, I flew out to Dallas. Glad he didn't. No, but, I, I wish yeah. he would have. <laughs> Glad he didn't. I flew out to Dallas, actually, before the draft. And I met with Jimmy, Jerry. I met Troy Aikman, uh, uh, Michael, Michael um, Irvin, who's my guy. I love that dude. And I remember Michael doing step-ups with dumbbells. And this was Michael Irvin was a star. Mm -hmm. and I go in the weight room and I'm just wide-eyed. And he's like, yo, big fella, remember... They only love you because of this. Don't think if you don't do this, they're going to love you like that. His cat is working, working. And Jimmy's like, yeah, you know, Jimmy and Jerry, yeah, we want to do a draft day deal. So we're going to pick in the first round. We want to get a deal done that day. We don't want any, any um, you know, holdouts. I'm like, oh, man. pick me. You ain't got to worry about that. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a broke kid from TSU. I'll come right up the road to Dallas, give me a contract. I'm good. Right there, huh? Sent the scout to my house oh, they, they on the, draft day. They put the icing on top, too, and didn't pick you. Got a briefcase. I'm like, my, my contract's in that briefcase. I'm sitting there with the family. He's sitting on the couch with us, drinking our drink, eating our food. He gets a call. They trade their pick. The Giants pick me. And now working with Jimmy all these years, I'm like, yo. Right, the fuck? You, you told me you're going to pick me, man. What's up? Said, I know. Uh, I didn't know you were going to be good. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, like, I like value. So I was hoping maybe I can get you in the second round. Mm. But now when I talk to him, he's like, well, maybe the third, fourth, maybe fifth, <laughs> sixth. So I'm like, oh, you think I'm Tom Brady, sixth round? Come uh, on, man. That's funny. Rookie year, had a little adversity. <clears throat> six, only played six games. How was that? Suck. Dealing with that? Sock. Yeah. Because you in New York. First of all, the, the for me, New York was like I thought Houston was fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I thought Houston was oh. twenty four seven. Yeah, right. And what? And then I come here, and I'm like, at first I said I'll never live in the city, I'll never drive in the city. I stayed at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. I never left the room the first time I was here until they came and picked me up and took me where I needed to go. Because mm -hmm. I would look out the window at two or three in the morning, people would be walking the street like ants. Mm -hmm. I said I'm gonna get mugged, robbed, <laughs> something's going to happen if I go out in the street by myself. So I, I would be walking around looking like that because, mm -hmm. you know, they say tourists don't look up. You show you're a tourist, they be looking for you. I was, like, naive about everything, man. And then to come here and be on the team with LT and Phil Sims and all those guys and to watch guys that I loved growing up play and not be able to be a part of it because of injury, I mean, it sucked because you're considered a bust in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and this city is impatient. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to, you no, know, work your way into it. Yeah, you don't yeah they don't care. They don't care. So for me, that, that, was, a, that was tough, you know, being here and, and being hurt. And then other than that, playing a sick game, not really getting a feel for, for how to be a pro. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, 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 those, those years I kind of washed out of my mind that, that rookie year, man. That was Two questions. First, how was LT? And then when did you feel like, how many years did it take you to feel like you had your footing? So first, how was LT? As a, as LT a was a great teammate. Crazy, which when he showed up at practice. When hmm. he showed up. When he showed up, <laughs> which he don't like when I say that, but it's true and you know it, LT. <laughs> this cat would go 100 miles per hour. Mm. When he's in there and practicing his reps, and sometimes he takes scout team reps, 100 miles per hour. Game speed. 
game speed. And that's one thing I learned from him. And practice was game speed. Mm. It wasn't going through the motions. And then in the meetings, I didn't learn nothing from him there because <laughs> this cat would come in, get a towel, roll it up, and lay on the floor and go to sleep the entire meeting. And then the coaches would, you know, <laughs> wake him up, turn on the light at the end. Like, not... Like, at the end of the meeting. They knew better not to wake him up during. Yes. Right. And then we'll go, hey, uh, you know, uh, LT, we put in this blitz and that blitz. Is that okay with you? Like, why the hell are you asking him? We all, and he'll wake for the last two right. hours. This cat's sleeping. You got to ask if it's okay. And if it's not, I guarantee you, they, they would have change changed that it. Yeah. Like, but he had earned that, man. Right. He had earned the respect of these coaches and, and, and of, of, us, of, of us as players. But he was a great team. He gave you a shirt off his back. Mm-hmm. Um, intimidating, like I, I, he's intimidating, and it took me until hell recently to not be intimidated <laughs> when I see LT. Mm -hmm. And he and I got into a big old argument, um, uh, not an argument, but a, a nice, fun conversation like a year or so ago at a golf tournament. He was like, you know, I'm, I should, I'm the, career, I should be the career leader in sacks for the Giants, and he's going on and on. I said, well, you know, you're not. <laughs> That's simple. I am. <laughs> well, if I didn't miss all them games, I, I didn't tell you to do the drugs, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mad at me for something you did. Right. right. But, yeah, that's my guy, man. I, I, yes, love, I love dude, man. That's Good dope. dude. That's, that's dope. So how did you, like, rough rookie year, when did you feel like you kind of got your foot in oh, on man, understanding four of the years. game? Four years. Four years. I had a great coach. Earl Leggett was my first D-line coach. Coach Howie Long with the Raiders. And, and incredible coach. If I didn't have him, I probably would have lasted a total four years mm. Because he taught us technique. He and John Fox, who went on to become, mm -hmm. you know, John Fox, Good Mike coach. Nolan was the coordinator. Yeah. They taught me um, how to watch film, how to study. Like, not watching film as a spectator. Mm -hmm. I'm watching film as a player trying to get better and understanding what I'm watching. Right. So that really helped. And Earl, technique-wise, no one could match him. How he taught us how to take on, you know, these two 350-pound guys want to crush you. How do you to turn into the technique so that you kind of negate when you're getting uh, doubled and all these different things like just did pass rust how to rush with power how to rush with finesse uh, he was just amazing so earl was a coach you glad you had not a coach you glad you have because mm -hmm. he was so hard During the on moment him. he was a beast so once he we had him for three or four years and then once earl went to d washington after that i don't know it was freeing it's like you, you were able to have his technique but you were able to not think about doing it. It just came naturally. Yeah, because yeah. with him, you had to worry about it all the time. Because you get in a meeting, and, man, this cat, would, he, would, he would talk dirty to you, talk bad to you if you're out there getting handled. Like, don't get hit, don't get pushed, don't get knocked down, and not defend yourself. Because mm. he would tell you, I'm too old to get out here and defend myself, son. You got to defend your own, yourself. Mm. You got to defend yourself. I'm too mm -hmm. old for this shit. Or if you're in a training camp, and you were out there getting beat up in training camp, he would literally come in and be like, hey, man, I got to go in these meetings. Send in front of everybody in the D-line room. I got to go in these meetings with these other coaches and fight for you. I got to go out there and fight for you. But look at this shit you're putting on film. Mm -hmm. You're just sending me up there with my dick in my hand. And you just saying, <laughs> <laughs> and you literally sitting there going, damn, yeah, right. All right, all right, you got to take right, it. Right, my right, bad. My you gotta take it. I loved it, though. I needed to be coached like that. I didn't need a coach who was soft on me and telling right. me everything's okay. Right. Because it's not. Mm-mm. He sweet. was perfect. But then once he went to, to Washington, I t we were able to take what he taught us and kind of be free with it. And it just came naturally, all the moves, the anticipation. And from then on, it was like, boop. So his foundation. Got the limit. Uh, dominant, 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 particularly against the run, 97 to 205, 2005. Uh, defensive player of the year in 2001. What did that mean to you? Everything. I never thought about doing nothing like that, man. I was just playing. Right. Like, I, I love the play. I love the competition. Uh, I love the fight. And, and it's kind of funny because I, I look at myself now and I'm just like chilling. And I think people look at me and they go, oh, you know, and people don't even realize I play football. <laughs> oh, you're just that right. nice guy from TV and all that. But to me, it's interesting because the other side is always there. And people don't really get a chance now to see it. And there's no need for anybody to see it. But I would walk into a locker room and, and feel like, you know, a normal small guy. But the second I put on the pads, it was like... Superhuman. My mind just switched to where... Mm -hmm. I had no regard for anybody if you're not on my team. Mm -hmm. I, I used to put on, you know, that, that 
See Murder and Snoop. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. That was the Fuck last song niggas, I put on. Before. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That was the last song I put on before I went out to play because that was my mindset. If you're not on my team, Fuck you. I don't care about you. Mm -hmm. I don't care what happens to you. Right. And so for me, being Defensive Player of the Year was, first of all, having great teammates. And secondly, just not limiting myself. Mm -hmm. I went from a guy who was like, oh, I get a sack. And I'm like, oh, whoo, that pressure's off. I got that sack, man. I can, get, you know, got it. hopefully maybe I get another one until like, why, why stop at one? Right. Why, what's limiting me? Let's we'll eat. get another and another and another. Let's eat. And, and try to help this team win. So that was, that was, um, winning that award was special. More special probably for my family than it was me because at the end of the day, my parents and all of them got a lot more joy, I think, out of all these things, and I got a joy out of making sure that they were proud. And so, yeah, that, that stuff like that, that's mom and dad stuff. Mm. You know, the whole career pretty much is because they encouraged me to do it. That's big. Uh, broke several sack records around the way. What one was most important to you? Breaking the LT sack record with the Giants. <laughs> the one that pisses him off <laughs> was, um, was the most important because uh, he, was, he was my favorite player. My favorite player, period, offense, defense, whatever. Nobody was like LT. So to get a year to play with him and to just sit there and, and be across from him during walkthroughs every day, and I can tell when he was in a good mood because he'd be practicing his golf swing, and I can tell he was in a bad mood because he'd just be staring at you. And I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, I'm just sitting here doing my job, man. I don't want no, I don't want no smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want no smoke. So, uh, so... Breaking his record and having him there for, you know, the career record and, and single season record, which I broke against the Eagles in 2001, was, was special. And as far as like the sack record for the league, I never thought about that. I really cared about that. Mm -hmm. But the LT stuff, I didn't realize I cared about until I actually did it. Because mm -hmm. it, it's hard to follow up a legend like that, and I'll never be the player LT was. No one ever will. All these, the next LT, there'll never be another LT. Mm. Got some great players out there, it'll be great, and maybe they'll be their own guy. There'll never be another LT, but at least to have the city have somebody they could be proud of right. and followed up, somebody like that, I'm good with that. Sitting back now, being removed for several years, what jumps out to you the most about your career as a whole? You gotta be damn crazy to play football. Mm. I watch guys get hit now, and I'm like, "What the hell?" Like, that that amazed me that I lasted 15 years doing it, and and didn't really have any major injuries. I I, I tore my pec, and I had Liz Frank in both of my feet, but nothing like devastating, big comeback type of mm -hmm. situation. So, thing that amazed me most about my career, honestly. It's just lasting through several generations of it. You guys played basketball mm -hmm. long enough mm -hmm. to where you, I know I feel like I lasted through three different generations. Yeah, different eras. Yeah, yeah eras. Mm -hmm. I had the, the LT era. And it was like, that was a special era. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was, if there were cell phones, we all, you know, we've been. <laughs> wouldn't be here. Yeah, it wouldn't be here. <laughs> like, because the stuff you just witnessed, you, just, you were in the room. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, we having a party, you got to be there. It's mandatory. Whoa. It's like, whoa, I've never seen this at Texas Southern. This is what room? <laughs> I didn't see this at Texas Southern. What room? <laughs> <laughs> Jack said, where's the room? <laughs> What's room number? I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, like that era, and then I had my era with me and Jesse Armstead, mm, Dallas yeah, Boy, Dallas, you know, Dallas Boy, Carter, yeah. uh, me and Armstead and Seahorn and all, the, and Keith Hamilton, those guys. And then I had the Eli Tuck OC era. So mm -hmm. I stuck around probably into to era, uh, like an era that I would probably shouldn't have been in. And that was what I, I look back on, and I'm just, I'm just happy I was able to do all that, man, because the relationship that I've been able to form right. with all those guys, mm -hmm. it's still, to this day, every day, D-line. We on a group text every day, oh. all day. And it's not one of these texts where it's like, yo, yeah, talking, talking shit to each other. It's literally family family yeah and what's important in mental health and yeah, man. if somebody needs help fred robbins his house burned down man our defensive tackle and so it's guys like what can we do send Damn. him this send him that make sure that's he's dope. straight you know and and so it's more about the brotherhood and, and protecting each other and and, and being there for each that's other dope. that's how it's supposed to be um obviously a whole shitload of sacks any quarterback in particular you just loved sacking all of them, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I, 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 Donovan McNabb, I, I sacked more than anybody. 
more than anybody. He was one of the more the elusive quarterbacks yeah, at that but that's time. That's what made you get not only elusive, but he was thick, big too. Thick yeah, big old dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. was not easy to, to 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 take him down. So, I think McNabb, any quarterback for the Cowboys. Anybody. I'm sorry, Jack. Uh, yeah, anybody. Girl. I mean, Jack, yeah, that's cool. Jack's used to it. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Any quarterback for the Cowboys. Hardest hit I ever put on anybody, period. Quarterback anybody was Gus Farratt with the Redskins. Ooh, Gus Farratt. Yeah. I, I tried to, uh, to, like, push his spine throughout of his chest. <laughs> I hit him in the back so hard. You see me coming. Um, and, yeah, Jake the Snake Plumber is probably the toughest guy to sack. Jake really? So anytime you can get a sack on Jake the Snake. Why you say that, though? Was that? It's a Arizona Cardinals? Yeah. 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 They call him the Snake for yeah. a reason, man. Uh, just he was, is he? He slippery, just, huh? Like, slippery. And then you literally, I'm right here just... Next thing you know, you on the ground really? because he would do something, bend his knees in and do some like, <laughs> thing, you know, thing he fly, like, where the hell did he it's go? You know what I'm saying? Right. Do some break dance move. And Michael Vick was another one, man. I wanted to ask you about Mike Vick. Vick, Vick claims I hit him harder than he's ever been hit by anybody. Really? And to this day at Fox, when he's hanging out with me, when he's there on Sunday at Fox, he still talks about it. I ain't gonna lie, I did try to break Mike back too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 he blindsided him. It's not he. Hey, you pull that out in the back of your head. Yeah. You're going back. Yeah. My job is to hit you. Yeah. And hit you as hard as I can. Plus, I don't want to hurt anybody. But if Vic got to go out, yeah, you help y'all. You gonna win? In peace. I see <laughs> you. Yeah. I'll let you by the bus when we on the bus going home. We go I don't want to have to chase you around all yeah. night. Make my job easy. Yeah. Make our job mm-hmm. easier. But quarterback like Michael, like Donovan, like Plummer, all those guys were the toughest guys because they were elusive. And then you had guys like Farrah. You had Brady, you know, mm-hmm. Tom. I mean, how do you not love second Tom Brady? But he's just not elusive like mm-hmm. that. Bro, anyone. I'll take anyone, man. All of them. That part I missed. So, so would, would LT be your MJ linebackers? Absolutely. Definitely. LT would be the MJ of the league. Period. Of the league, period. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I mean, it's not even, not even close. Yeah. And I do, I will say, kid, you got down in Dallas, um, linebacker. Oh, with the young boy. Michael yeah. Parsons. Yeah. He's special. Yeah. He's special, but it's his thing now. What he's doing is special, is different. Like Lawrence, I don't know what that dude was, was how, how, where he was built, what factory he came out of. But I think Michael Parsons is about as close as we've seen to being dominant at that position. Yeah, yeah. But he's got to do it consistently. Right, right. You know, he's got us just now. One year. You, you got to give it to me every year, year for like 12. Like LT did 12. You got to give it to me for 12. Yes. Long time. Yeah, yeah. Long time. Uh, after the 2006 season, you debated retirement after missing training camp in the Not preseason. Really. I lied, man. Oh, you did? That was just the story. No, I did money. Camp. He said, I want to go. He said, I didn't want to go to camp. I want to go to camp. camp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to go camp. I knew I was coming back. I didn't want to go camp. Yeah, so you yeah. came back and it was a special year. Talk to us about that season. It was, it was special because I didn't care. I didn't care. I didn't care about sacks. I didn't care about accolades. I didn't care about winning. I literally came back and said, I got one year after 14 years of always worrying about winning, Everything. making sure guys are ready, you know, all this crazy stuff, all that pressure. I just want to come back and have fun for one year. Mm-hmm. Because football was not, in this city, right. was not always fun. It was tough. So I came back and said, hey, whatever happens, happens. Play with the Before free mind. Play. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to have fun. And at the end, it ended up being the most magical run and beating uh, the Patriots who were undefeated right. in the Super Bowl. Of, you know, I, I never, you couldn't have even written the script mm-hmm. any better than that. I didn't expect that. So it was great to come back, play with these guys, have fun with these guys, laugh with these guys. Coughlin would always yell at the D-line, like, y'all need to in practice, y'all need to tone down. We were like, no. Nah. If you don't like it, then that's just too bad. Because we knew we were leading the team anyway. Mm-hmm. Our D-line was strong. We knew, like, without us, we got good players and good, but you need a good, strong front mm-hmm. four, mm-hmm. Uh, front, you know, but seven, eight guys we had who could play. And so we had fun every single day. And that's what I remember the most. That's what I enjoyed the most. And training camp, I, didn't, I just didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I did 14 years of camp, right. do a month a year. I spent over a year of my life in some, some dorm bed up in Albany, New York. Nah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm done. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll fake retire. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Yeah. I did have to pay a fine when I came back, though. As a, as, a, as a linebacker, how good was Randy Moss? Randy was... Whew, Randy was one of a kind. Mm-hmm. 
He was, he was, what are those, what are those praying mantis in long limb things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just reach out, grab his stuff. But Randy made the best defensive backs look pedestrian. Right, yeah. Average. Average. He made the fastest defensive backs look, look slow. slow. Yeah. And then on the big catches where most guys are going to make sure, put two hands, he reached up that one hand casually like casually he in the backyard casually. with his kids, telling his son, throw me the ball, and he catches it over, over his other kid. He made he made everything that should have been tough look easy, mm. and 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 Randy is like I did a great dude man. I, I love That's Randy, country, yeah. good brother. Man. Country, I love country. Randy. Yeah. And um, so playing against Randy and watching Randy was was definitely a treat. And we had, we played against him. When we were they were uh, he was in Minnesota in the playoff game to go to the Super Bowl back in. 2000 and oh, that was him seven. and Cole Pepper, Chris oh, Carter. Oh, 2001. Yeah, Dante Cole Pepper, Cole Pepper Chris Randy, Carter. Chris Carter, mm-hmm. Robert Smith, that yeah. running back. Mm-hmm. I mean, them cats were loaded, and they were whipping everybody. And we ended up beating them 41 to nothing. Smacked them. Mm-hmm. Smacked them. But we got, they were out of the game before the game even started. And I kind of knew we had a shot because I, Randy was arguing with security and all that before the game try, with, for Little Wayne and then to get on the field. So I'm like, hey, focus, focus. Like, we, yeah, we're, we're just, a, you know, they ain't paying attention to us. And next thing you know, we're got out it. 41 nothing, Oof. and heading to the Super Bowl, which we got stomped. But Randy wasn't on the undefeated Patriots team? Yeah, this is when he was on no, the Vikings, No, this was 2001. Yeah, no, yeah that yeah. was yeah. the Patriots Baltimore team. Ravens. Yeah, the Ravens. Yeah. When they had like 12 Ray Lewises on the field at yeah. one time. Like, what the hell? How can Ray make every tackle, man? He made the tackle behind the line. Now he's making the dollar. I mean, Ray Lewis is out here. But yeah, that, 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 that was good to be in the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. But not good Got to get taste. your butt whipped yeah. in the Super yeah. Bowl. So going back to that uh, 08 season, obviously the Pats were undefeated uh, at the time. A uh, huge catch by Tyree. Oh, man. What were you thinking when you saw that that catch off the helmet? Get up and spike it or throw it and run the next Hurry play. Hurry up. Because I don't know if he caught it. That was great mm-hmm. D. Yeah, he was all over him. All over him. Harrison's all over his mm-hmm. back. And, and the thing is, Tyree is not a, not a... He was the wide receiver we put in the game to block. Mm-hmm. He, you put him in the game, it's like, oh, they're going to run the ball. Mm-hmm. He wasn't the guy we're going to run all these patterns with. Mm-hmm. But... It goes to show in extraordinary situations, people show up. Some people step he up. He caught a touchdown early in the game. He caught that ball off his helmet. Mm-hmm. But he couldn't catch a damn ball on Friday in practice. I swear to you, mm-hmm. every ball he dropped to the point we start yelling, beat him up, ball. Mm-hmm. Beat him up. <laughs> every ball. I'm not one ball he caught. Damn. He dropped every ball off his pass, off his head. Everything it was embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And the coach told us, like, yeah, yeah, let, 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 leave the kid oh, alone. Like, no, nah, he yeah. asked me to learn to catch. He's a wide receiver. Right. Then he gets in the game and makes one of the greatest catches Play. under pressure mm-hmm. I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And, and the second he caught that ball, I realized we won the game. We hadn't even thrown the touchdown to Plexico yet or whatever. I'm like, you can't have something that good happen and not win. Not in the right way, yeah. And then Eli getting out of a sack. Eli's so clumsy, man. That cat trips trying to walk around the house. Yeah, How the hell are you going to get out of a sack <laughs> right. and then throw it up in the middle of the field? So I realized after that catch and after Eli getting out of that, it was meant to be. This game is ours. It was it's dead, meant yeah. to be. Thoughts on uh, Brady, obviously in his longevity from you've seen him from the beginning to still doing it. Yeah, crazy. I don't know if I've been 20 some years mentally, I would be done. Mm-hmm. But apparently he's still got a chip on his shoulder from being picked in the sixth round. But it's it's amazing to, you know, to have a I have a business with him now, religion of sports business, a production business, and he's as committed to that and as focused on that and as a, about being the best and the content being top notch and everything have to be the highest quality as he is on the football field. So being that close to him, I see why he is who he is. I see what motivates him. Now, could I play that long? No. After 15, we won that Super Bowl. I was like, I'm good. I, I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't need no more. What's next? I, I'm good. I, yeah. What's next? But when you're on the field with somebody like that, and in the Super Bowl, and we were hitting him so much and so fast, like it felt like they're not even trying. And then you start to realize we're just overwhelming them. And when you see him at first, he gets hit, then he gets up, then he gets hit again, he gets up. Then once he starts getting up and looking at the lineman, once he spikes the line. ball down and starts cursing out the guys, you're like, oh, now we got him. Mm-hmm. Like, we got him now. This is legit. 
but the hell of a competitor and who told me after we beat them in that Super Bowl not long ago, he said, I, I would have... I would give up a few rings for that one. Because mm, that would have been the only, yeah. Undefeated. Seven, Undefeated, 18 games? 18 and 0. Damn. 18, 19 games in a row. Like, a crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anybody doing that ever again mm -hmm. like they did. Tough. That's when you put Brady and Moss together. That's what mm -hmm. happens. <laughs> and then it helped. Even though we went took the lead, he threw that bomb down yep. to Moss. Yep. We are still holding our breath because Randy... Damn, they're caught it. Yeah, he did. And you got safeties who have a head start on and corners like have a head start them. running. He's still running past them. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that, I did not. Once that game was over, I'm, I'm like, we didn't need to add another second to the clock. Yeah. And if you, we had to play them two more times, five more times, ten more times, that one was probably the only one we were, we were going to win. <laughs> That's yeah. the only one that mattered, though. Yep, the only one that mattered. One highlight in your career that would go viral now. Mm. Damn. Man, got him thinking. It's a lot of, it's a lot of highlights, that's why. <laughs> probably, no, you know what, the highlight I'm thinking about is probably not even on, you know, in a game, probably fighting somebody at practice. <laughs> that happened so, a lot, though. We don't, I mean, sometimes in basketball, but y'all really be scrapping in nah, practice. No, 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 yeah, we be scrapping, man. Yeah. I mean, over simple stuff, too. Something as trivial as... We you know we lock up on a play and the play is over and I'm like let you go and then you give me that little extra you know little it's extra. Fighting I want like the last brother, push. Like, uh huh. Like a little extra. Ah, uh, that don't don't do that. Mm -mm. That's like dismissing. Mm. Don't dismiss, cause I ain't gonna tell you. I'm not gonna take. Well, you dismiss. I'm just gonna go grab you and we gonna do it. Like in the locker room fights that we had, I had a fight with um a lineman Scott Gregg. Over he somebody else did something to him, but he's still mad about it. So he. And he just happened to block me on a play, so he's trying to take it out on me. And I'm already ready for it because I know he's mad over the other stuff. So we start scrapping, grab each other's face masks, and his helmet comes off. Uh oh, open season. And he still got mine, so you got you got control. He's like trying to twist my head. You don't have a choice. Like, got to take a couple. Got to swing. Bam. Ooh. Yeah. And then I jump down there and just da, da, couple da, more. And, and then people come grab you, and then I look up and Jesse Armstead's fighting Howard Cross. Across the way. So afterwards, I'm like, why are you fighting Howard? He go, I ain't like him, man. I didn't like him. I just, he just went over there and picked the fight. <laughs> you, start, you started fighting him, <laughs> going ride right to his ass. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. he just went over there and picked the fight. That sounds like some but shit. But then you know when you do that, and you get in the locker room, and Scott Grad looks at me, hey, you got me good on that one. And then you move on. Like, you don't hold on right. to it. But those are like things that I think back that um, are more viral plays on the field, of course, sacking Brady in the Super Bowl, sacking far for the sack record. Um, a few, few nice plays that I made that 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 I'm like look back and go, damn, I was mm -hmm. actually pretty good. <laughs> so for me, it's kind of hard to even think back. Like I sometimes forget I even play football myself. Mm -hmm. And um, so to think back and see some of the stuff that I, that I did when I see a film film of it, I'll go, damn. It was balling. Mm -hmm. Boy, nice. It was balling. 2014 Hall of Fame inductee. You got your, your number 92 retired by the Giants. As you reflect back on real, talk to me about how you feel about it as a whole. I feel great because I feel like I did it the right way. Mm -hmm. I never cheated. Yep. Mm. I never took a shortcut. Put the work in. I never required to ask for anybody, my teammates, my coaches, nobody to put in any more work than I put in, ever. And year 15, I practiced. Every play I was supposed to practice, I ran down the field to chase the, the, the ball when they threw it down there. I did everything from year one to year 15. And that's what makes me more most proud when I reflect on it and that it all paid off at the end by winning the Super Bowl. And um, Barkley, I, first time I met Charles, and I didn't know Charles. I mean, I'm in a golf tournament, and he looks at me and he goes, Michael Strahan. I go, hey, what's up, Charles? Hey, nice to meet you. You know, you on my shit list. I'm like, shit, I, like, how am I on your shit list? I don't even know you. I just met you. He goes, no, 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 no. I like you like someone who had a great career, but ain't one shit. <laughs> uh, he said, but now you're off my list. Mm. And I was like, thank God, because I don't want to be on your shit list yeah, to having a great Chuck's career, but list. never like <laughs> experiencing, experiencing that, like the whole reason you play in the first place. Yep. The win, the mm -hmm. championship, and they had a confetti fall and you get to enjoy it instead of like the first time it fell and they swept us off the field mm. with the confetti while Baltimore <laughs> enjoyed it. And so, 
Yeah, man. I just want to just doing everything the right way, mm -hmm. treating people the right way, and and kind of define the odds. That's what I'm most proud about. Great career. When did you know you wanted to move to television? When I found out I could make money. Man, who who, <laughs> hey. like, hold up. who that sound like? <laughs> Us. Yeah, <laughs> definitely sound like us. Yo, you know what? <laughs> hey. But he's making big money, Yeah, Jack. We, we on our way. Yeah, we on our way. okay. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm telling you, though, but it, it, it it's like incremental. That's One thing I realized, like, when I started, um, and I never thought, like, TV is going to be my life. I, just, I would do stuff here in New York because it was fun. I could have to do something. Right. Yeah, let me do it. And... One executive who ran a network called me and asked me to go to breakfast. And I'm like, why this cat want to go to breakfast with me? Man, we been not friends like that. But he asked me at breakfast, how much long do you want to play football? And I'm sorry, it's a weird question. I said, I don't know. It's because he saw potential, mm -hmm. you know, which I didn't even see in myself at the time. And then before, and I started doing the best damn sports show, period. Yep. And that was like a breeding ground for athletes to learn how to have conversations and ask questions and just kind of do your thing, and then Fox signed me to a deal to do that for my last few seasons of, the, of my career. And then before my last season, they actually signed me to do the deal that Fox NFL Sunday that I do now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't ready to retire. So they said, whenever you're ready, we'll take it out the drawer, kind of like what they did with Brady. It just we'll take it out the drawer. Two hundred. But I didn't get that. Ooh, <laughs> two hundred off the rip. No, man, I, 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 I didn't get that. Two sixty. Three seventy five. Oh, that's three seventy five. Yeah, three seventy five. Yeah, three hundo. But trust me, if I got that, I'll retire after ten years. Yeah. Right. But no, I didn't get anything near that. But I did have a deal right. which gave me some comfort in knowing that I had something else that I could right. do. And once I started, it's addictive. Mm -hmm. Once you start doing this and and you get more comfortable with the reps then it kind of becomes, like, as enjoyable as playing sports. Right. And I did from Fox, and then I did the best damn, the, the, then I did Pros versus Joes. Oh, that's right. You Jay did Glazer that. Yeah. brought that back, he and I did that show. And I just started doing little stuff that a lot of people didn't see, will probably never see. But for me, it gave me experience, and that I add on to everything else that I do. Like, I did a show called Brothers on Fox. Mm -hmm. Acting, sitcom, 12 episodes. Didn't do nothing, but for me, it taught me two several things. One, acting, I like it, but I don't love it enough to go to auditions all the time and, and take the rejection. And, and two, that I could actually could be decent if I really wanted to be at it. Mm -hmm. So, But I'd use all that when I had to do other stuff on like GMA, if I had to act a certain way, when mm -hmm. I was on Live with Kelly, having to do skits. All these things kind of melt together. Put in your so toolbox. Every experience, I take something mm -hmm. out of it if someone sees it as a success or failure, I'm still learning something, which is all I care about. And so the TV stuff now, I've learned to create opportunities, which is important. Like, you guys created this show. Mm -hmm. Now, with the way the world is, you can create. You mm -hmm. have an idea, you can make it happen. You don't need a 20 other right. people, 30, 40, 50 people to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of freedom in that, and that I enjoy too. So I've just done the game shows, hosting $100,000 Pyramid. We that was our next question. That. Break that down, though, because I heard that was one of your favorite shows growing yeah, up. Talk to us about that. I loved it as a kid, but who thinks you're going to be Post hosting that, show, that right? game show? I mean, that's Dick Clark. Yeah, right. That's like royalty of TV who hosted the show, and Sony reached out and, and wanted me to host the show. And my partner Constance and I, we were like, well, we're not interested just in hosting the show. We want to, you know, produce. And I, they're like, no, 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 that's what we want to do. We want to be your partners in it. Mm. And so that was an immediate yes when they came back with that response. And it's been fun because, I mean, it's a classic show, a timeless mm -hmm. show, a family show. Like, everybody can watch it. And it's engaging. And when I'm hosting the show, I'm actually... I know the categories, but I don't know the words that the celebrity and the contestant have to figure out until they <clears> pop up <throat> on the screen. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing it with everybody at home. So it always keeps me interested and engaged. And, and I never thought that I would do anything like that. And I had to just learn everything on the fly. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about daytime television. I had to learn on the fly. I didn't know anything about um, news. I had to learn it, throw you in that sink or swim. Right. I didn't know anything about game show. Go back, like sports, watch tape. Mm -hmm. See what other people do. Soak it up, yeah. That the way you do it is not. Like, Pyramid is it's special because it's not a game where I need to be the star. The game is the star. I just got to be the conduit. Keep it going, Keep yeah. Keep everything on the mm -hmm. in track. Make sure, you know, people are comfortable in what they're doing. 
And and so yeah, man, experience and just not being afraid to fail. Right. Can't be. Shout out Constance. I heard nothing but good things about her. I need to meet her. Yeah, she's a boss, man. I need to meet you should her. meet her. Yeah, I need to meet definitely her. Definitely meet her. Yeah, I need to meet her. Well, man, it's been great. We appreciate your time. So we got quick hitters right now. So first thing to come to mind, let us know. One album you can listen to with no skips. Oh. Damn, man. When y'all cause this ain't no quick hitter. I gotta mm -hmm. think. Come on with I gotta it. Hit. See, you know, this is basketball. I hope that takes come on with something, right? The basketball player stuff. We got hit in the head for a living. <laughs> These cats didn't get hit in the head for a living. Their brain works quick. My brain don't work that quick. I don't know my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't get hit in the head. I'm still moving this. <laughs> you know what I could, if I wanted to go back to my days of having to drive the prowl, I'd go with Mob Deep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mob Deep back in the day was, I like was, that. was on top of Shook it. ones. Shook ones. You ain't a crook, son. Yeah, sir. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Do you still talk to your socks? Yes. Yes, and, and whoever, somebody heard me, because now you get by sock, they got left and right on them, or L and R or left. Somebody stole my idea. I was ahead of my time, Jack. Oh, that was you. So when, so when the last time you I spoke to, to him? Oh, the other day. What, what this was, morning, actually, because these don't have like? left or right. What was the conversation like? What do you feel? Do you feel right on this foot? Like, I'll look at the sock. <laughs> it is serious. Have you taken them off and put them on the Absolutely. other side? Absolutely. <laughs> I've taken off my sock and I've put it on the other. Or I've grabbed two left socks and I'm like, uh-uh, I got to go good. Somebody go right. Get right. Because I just feel like if they ain't on the right foot and they're telling me they're gonna, I'm going to be off balance all Today. day. I'm going to be right. That's the deal. Oh, I ain't like mad that. at that. Gotta listen I like to your that. socks, man. All right. Biopic of your life, who would play you? Oh, man. Damn, who could play me? Hmm. Who would be willing to get a prosthetic gap? <laughs> Before I got hit by that car, I could have played him. Because I had one, too. I was one where I got hit by a car, so I got my shit fixed. Yeah, blame the Knocked car, Knocked all man. my you teeth out. You could have fixed and put a gap back in there. It, it was just too... My shit was gone. All my shit was gone. <laughs> it was, yeah, all of them. <laughs> How old were you? I was playing for the Pacers. You got, then... You got hit by a car. Defending a, my teammate. In a gun shootout. <sighs> yep. That's why I got all them scars on my lips now from that day. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here to talk right. about it. He get played me. We gonna put a prosthetic in. <laughs> yeah, I do it. My doppelganger right there. I'll man. do it. I'll do it love for sure. It. Yeah, I he wanna be an to. actor too. Yeah, I, I got some stuff coming up. Cool. All right. I don't know why we saying N Y. He. This is the Texas boy, but since the question is N Y, we gonna since. No, he, make it Texas. Okay, cool. Top five Texas athletes of all time. Earl Campbell. Ooh, good call. Thank I, you. How is he? All right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He you got know, beat up, man. It was a different type of football, man. Yeah, back then. And they literally ran him until they couldn't run him anymore. Mm -hmm. I would, so, you know, it, it, yeah. I would go Earl Campbell. Now, for Texas, you mean who played in Texas? Or have to be from Texas? From Texas. You got to be in there. Okay. Thank Look you. at that. You got to be in there. I'm honored. I got to be in there. Of course. You, I say you got to put yourself on there. Where's Ricky Williams from? San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. He's yeah. like, get out of here. Uh, who else is from Texas? I'm trying to... Jesse, Arm, Jesse Armstrong. I got to throw my boy Jesse Armstrong. Of course. So I'm a number one player coming out of high school, Dallas uh, Carter. Who is a great... There got to be... Shaq graduated high school in Texas. But sh yeah, but Shaq wasn't from Texas. Oh. oh. It's a whole bunch of baseball players. Clayton Kershaw. Ooh. Clayton, Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw and yep. Matthew Stafford. That's another yep. one. Matthew there Stafford. we go. Funniest thing that happened to you recently? My daughter start rebelling. Uh oh, how does she? <laughs> he said funny like motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, how does she? Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, it's funny now because I'm laughing with y'all. They yeah, funny with you. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Not funny then. When, when you got twins and they're 17 and mm, they, you know, oh, yeah. one mm, got a boyfriend, mm, thinks mm, she's doing everything. Yeah. It gets pretty funny around that. I got five girls. Yes. I got twin boys, but they're only 13, and I, it's less stress for me because yeah, I just got a game on how to be men, not how to... Your part. Well, yeah, my, you're teaching your boys how to be men. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep mine stay away, away from, from them. Men. Right, yeah. Stay away <laughs> yeah. from them. You got five yeah. girls. Hats off to you, brother. You got long. I got mm -hmm. three girls and one mm -hmm. boy, mm -hmm. so at least I got one one to give me a little mm -hmm. relief. But, um, but yeah, man, the funny thing that happened to me recently, oh, I was in L.A., with my Fox guys, we were shooting a promo on the beach in Santa Monica, and a guy, I saw, we were at the skate park, and they were filming us just watching kids skate in the skate park in Santa Monica. And as we're walking out of the skate park, you know, I'm walking with the Fox guys, and right before we turn away from the um, skate park, the kid goes, 
hey, Michael. And I'm like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you know, kid knows me. Yeah. You know, they all look at me like, well, damn, he ain't say nothing to us. And I'm like, well, you know, I, I mean, we a little different. Right, right. <laughs> well, we're walking. Two minutes later, the kid rolls up and says, hey, man, I just want you to know I was adopted by a white family, too. So that movie about your life, I really appreciate it because that really he helped me. Michael he Orr. thought I was Michael Orr from the blind side. <laughs> I'm a blind side. Well, damn. <laughs> damn. I still like the Jefferson. Damn. I mean, a oh, good time. Damn. Shit. Damn. Damn. Oh, damn. That's tough. You thought, you thought Sandra Bullock was your mom? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, man, hey, trust me. I've Michael been at the Orr. garden, sitting on floor <laughs> seats, feeling good about myself years ago. And somebody, <laughs> hey, what's up, champ? I think I'm Riddick Bowe. You oh, think I'm man. Mike Tyson? I'm like, come on, man. We all black. That's about it. That's you don't look tough. Like. Mm. Okay, so what's your what's your favorite item in the collection by Michael Strahan? Shameless plug. And where can we get it? Shameless plug. Yeah. I like it all. Go to J.C. Penney, or you can go to Men's Warehouse. Okay. Yeah. Men's Warehouse, J.C. Penney, more stores are online. All right, shameless plug over. Let's move on. J.C. Penney's got my T-shirts, Stafford T-shirts. I go we need been to get, going we need there to get for get like some of that 15 years. T-shirt. Oh, you know what? I gotta say, we do T-shirts. We need some Strahan and, and gear. Seriously, I'm not joking. I'm not joking, man. Our underwear are incredible. Send us some. We'll wear them. I we'll will send show you them off underwear. on the show. T-shirts too? Is that? Yeah. T-shirts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever, whatever. We do everything. We do everything. Suits to athleisure wear. I look, wear, I look cats, nice in a suit it. too. T-shirts. I clean up undershirts, nice. Undershirts. Underwear. <laughs> we got The whole line. Yeah. I love it. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. Five dinner guests, dead. Denzel, who was always an interesting conversation. I think Denzel, Muhammad Ali. Mm. My my dad, hmm. who else would I throw in that conversation to keep it interesting? Man, I would love to have like Connolly the Rice or something. Like, mm. And um, last but not least, damn, how could I leave y'all out, man? But y'all too. Oh yeah. Oh, but y'all come at the package. Yeah, yeah he's the second fine. guest. To, yeah. Man, we bring honored, us. We man. appreciate yeah, it. It's been man. recent no, too. It's saying, been recent too. Yeah. 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 They but started, that would be. Um, they starting to feel it. But that would. But that would be. I mean, imagine, imagine. That'd be a great conversation, dope. man. Here's the trick question. All right. If you could have any guests on this show, who would it be? But you have to help us get him on the show or her on the show. Trick bag. Yeah, that's that's a trick. How <laughs> you like that hey, one? Huh? I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta steal that. That's yeah. a good one. Any guests on this show? And I would have to help you get them. And you know everybody. Everybody. Have you had Brady on the show? Have not. Man. I just went and watched him play the quarterback challenge Did the other day at the golf thing oh, yeah, in Vegas. I was win. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you that say was Brady? Yeah. yeah. Tom Brady, man. Why don't you That's get That's your Tom business Brady? partner, too, right? Why don't you get Tom Brady? Why don't you get Aaron Rodgers? Like, get, no, get no, 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 stick with, let's stick with Tom. Okay, okay, cool with Tom. Stick with Tom. I, like Aaron, I like Aaron, but we're going to start with Tom, though. <laughs> Tom, right, Tom awesome. Brady, it is. Oh, yes, like, we nice, need that. One quick awesome. question: We forgot to ask. We could put this back in. Right. So, on the NBA side, we got Chuck, Charles, Kenny, Shaq. Yeah. You guys have Terry, Jimmy, uh, me and Howie. You, Howie. What is that like? I mean, it looks like you guys are just having fun the whole time up there. We all love Chuck and Kenny and Shaq. Even though I can't understand half the stuff Shaq's saying. <laughs> I love Shaq, man. And Ernie is fantastic. And then with Earth, us and Kurt and Jimmy Howie, Terry and Jay, um, we, we love that show because it reminds us so much of ourselves. Right. We just have fun. That's it. And what we say on air, we don't know what each other going to say, just like they know. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. just like... Our job is to basically hang out with each other and talk about football, which you were going to do with your boys anyway, Regardless. except we get paid to do it. And it's more fun... When the show is over and we're sitting in the green room, avocado room, and we watching the games together mm -hmm. because you have all these different perspectives. And then you got guys who are funny mm -hmm. and guys who know what they're talking about when it comes to the game. But then guys who just incredible personalities. So we look at ourselves at the NFL version of right. that show. So do we. And, and that's a compliment to them because yeah. those guys, the show is Unmatched. And to you guys. You guys, I mean, football is my first sport, so I love watching you guys, man. So. All right, answer this then. Could you have played in the NFL? He could have. I sure. don't like to disrespect. 
uh, people because I know how hard it is to make it, but I was nice in football. I ran a 4-3-9, led the nation really? in touchdowns, could really catch, could really run. Oh, you've been a wide receiver. You would have yeah, been I like a, Randy Moss. I played football. Yeah, I was, the, I, led, I was the number one receiver in the country my senior year, led Yo, the nation. I just thought longevity. When I went to UCLA and the basketball program was coming off a national championship, and I just thought longevity would be – I would have made more of a, a splash impact in football, but I don't think I, at 6'8". It wasn't you, really you, out there. You were smart. Yeah. Because, you know, y'all always get those con guaranteed mm -hmm. contracts, too. Yeah. yeah. That's what we always go. Damn, I they can, guarantee, I have. That's guaranteed. Well, I don't understand how you guys didn't, like, you guys are literally risking your life every day, but it's not guaranteed. Well, the argument is always that um, there are too many guys, and if guys get hurt, how to substan how do you maintain um, a league when you're paying so many contracts for guys who wouldn't even be available and who would be out of the league for the so long. The NBA is doing that shit. Motherfuckers not playing. They still yeah, getting still getting paid. <laughs> right. some, in some way, right. some way it can get done. Right. I and, agree. And, and yeah, but you're out there, man, and, and you literally, when you become a vet and you make it after the first, second, third game, then you're you're, you're guaranteed. Once you make that final roster, you guarantee that season. Mm -hmm. But that's it. That's crazy. Mm. And so every every year you're out there trying to earn it. And and that's that's the challenge. Like, is there is no glide? There right. is no oh year ten, eleven, twelve. I got to glide through. Mm -hmm. No. And that's why when you do a contract, you try to get as big of a signing bonus as you can because that at that's least will make win. them Probably. you know a little less. Yep. You know, thinking about cutting you because mm -hmm. you got so much of their money in your pocket. Yep. In the NFL, they got more teams with billion dollar valuations than NBA teams. Oh, yeah. But a lot you more know what players what though, oh, too. Yeah, we can't let you leave Before empty-handed, bro. Get out of here, man. Some All the Smoke gear, merch. Oh. Definitely, definitely, definitely want to see you rock it. You know what I mean? You can get it at All the Smoke dot store for all you people out there. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? Can I all open the it? Smoke yeah. dot store, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. We all, you know, we swaggy. Okay. And I know you got some fresh kicks to go with that because you got all some right. fresh ones on today. You know, I, these are just the everyday throw arounds. But, uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. But I got, yeah, I got more shoes than I know. I, I ain't going to be like, they, somebody unwrapped the Christmas gift and they act like they're trying to save the paper. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do that. Like open. We got enough wrapping for you. Yes, sir. All the smoke merch. All right. You know what I'm, what I'm talking about, America. Host Make sure y'all go get y'all some of this. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's an honor for us to have to I see you. Man. man, thank but you very much here. for your time. We know you're really busy. But thank thank you. you. My Texas brother. Yes. Hey, it's your poem, I man. told you. I told you. We just gave it up. Thank you. Man, that's a wrap with Michael Strahan. You catch the show Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform. Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. All the smoke. number one in the world on such an unbelievable high. Why does it not feel that amazing? I would dwell on tennis matches when I could have been a better dad. You always hear, do whatever it takes to win at any cost. Is it all worth it?